Weather effects, like rain and snow, are really great ways of adding more realism or life to your game scene or environment. In this video, we'll show you how to quickly and easily create rain, a water ripple effect, and a water drop splash effect that you can easily incorporate into your game or scene. To create this effect, we don't need any complex assets or plugins. We simply need a couple of sprites, which you can easily create on your own, or simply download and use the ones we created. In the description of this video, we've provided a link to freely download the assets and effects we'll create in this video. Feel free to download them and follow along, dissect the effect, or simply use the completed effect in your game or project. And for more free assets, scripts, and effects, be sure to leave a like and place what you'd like us to cover in an upcoming video or to simply create and give away. To create this effect, we don't need any complex scenes or assets. However, to better demonstrate how the rain can interact with the other objects in our scene, we'll use this scene from our upcoming game, Ninjas vs Samurai, in order to show you how to create this effect. We'll begin by creating a particle system, which we can do by right-clicking in our hierarchy and under the Effects tab, click Particle System, or by going to the Game Object menu at the top of our screen and under Effects, clicking Particle System. Let's begin by changing our emission shape to a box and we can then move our particle system up so that it's above the elements in our scene. Let's then use the scale values in our emission shape so that its width and length encompasses the focal area of our scene. And we also want to make sure the rotation of our particle system transform is set to zero on X, Y, and Z axis. Something to note, we don't want this particle emitter to encompass the background elements of our scene or areas outside of the main play area, since for those elements, we can create a much simpler particle system that doesn't have raindrops and splashes. This will allow us to save on our system resources by not using the splash and ripple effects outside of the areas which the players can see them. At this point, our particles to be moving in the Z axis. However, we want our particles to come down in our Y axis instead of floating towards the background or foreground. We can do this in several ways, such as adjusting the value in a gravity modifier or enabling and adjusting the values in our velocity over lifetime setting. However, for better control over our rain, we'll enable our force over lifetime setting and we'll set our Y value to a negative 100. By additionally using the X and the Z values in our force over lifetime settings, we can also adjust the direction and weight in which our rain falls. Additionally, if we also change our force over lifetime from constant to randomize between two constants, we can add a more organic feel to the way that the rain falls. Next, we need to decrease our particle starting size as well as increase our particle spawn rate. And we can also decrease the lifetime of our particles so that they die shortly after leaving the play area. And to vary our start size, let's change that from constant to randomize between two constants. And since we shorten our particles life cycle, let's also shorten our particles duration value. At this point, many of the basic elements of our particle system is complete. However, our particles appear more like snow than falling rain at this point. In order to fix this, we'll need to go into our render settings in our particle system and change our render mode from billboard to stretch billboard. At which point, we'll need to increase our length scale until our particle appears more like falling rain streaks. And for our final adjustment for our particles look, let's enable scale over lifetime. And for our scale over lifetime, place our starting point at 0.35 and our end point at 1.0. This will help give the illusion that our rain is falling high from the sky as it approaches the player in our scene. Before we move on to creating our splashes and our water ripple effect, let's tweak our setting size and color until it creates the best effect that we're looking for or that best suits our game. At this point, our rain is more realistic 
in the way that it subtly blends between our background. However, if you want a more fantasy looking rain, or as a way to get the rain to stand out a bit more, we can simply create a new material with an emission and use its emission color and brightness to make the rain stand out a bit. For the sake of the video, let's brighten our raindrops emission so it's easier to see on screen. At this point, let's rename then duplicate our particle system so we can use it for our background areas and areas outside the player's view that doesn't need our raindrop splash and ripple effect. With that complete, let's next create a water drop ripple effect and then move on to creating a water drop splash. To do this, let's create a new particle system. And in this particle system, let's first make sure that all our, rot our rotation transforms are set to zero, and let's then turn off our particle's emission shape. Next, let's open our emission setting, and we wanna turn our rate over time to zero, and instead use our burst emission. With our burst enabled, we wanna change our burst count to one. Next, we wanna change our starting speed from five to zero, Let's change its duration from 5 to 0.6, and let's decrease our starting size from 1 to 0.5. And let's also decrease our lifetime from 5 to 0.3. Next, we want to enable our size over lifetime setting so that our water drop appears to start small and then becomes bigger until it fades away. Let's also adjust our color over lifetime gradient, making it fully transparent at the beginning and end of its life. Lastly, let's adjust the look and render mode for our particle. First, under our render tab, we want to change our render mode from billboard to horizontal billboard. This way, a particle will always appear as it's on the ground and facing up towards the player. Next, we want to create a lit particle material. And in this material, we want to set our surface type to transparent. And we want to then use our water drop ripple sprite sheet, albedo, and normal map texture. Let's also raise our smoothness and our metallic values for our material so that our water ripples appear wet. And once complete, let's apply our new water ripple material to our particle system. At this point, while we have the desired look and effect of our water ripple, currently due to the texture, we have three water ripples side by side. The reason for this is that this texture and normal map were created to be used with the particles texture sheet animator. With that said, let's enable the texture sheet animator. And in our tile settings, we want to change our X value from one to three. If we now scroll within our particle playback time, we can see that the particle system cycles through our sprite throughout our particle's life cycle. At this point, we can tweak our particle system values until it achieves the optimal effect that we're looking for. With that complete, let's rename our particle system, then create our final splash effect, and then combine them all together for our final effect. For our splash effect, let's create one last new particle system. And let's start by decreasing our duration, our starting lifetime, and let's also be sure to zero out the rotation transforms of our new particle system, our start speed, and our start size. Let's adjust our emission rate over time to zero and instead use our burst emission and we'll set our burst emission count to five. Next, let's change our particle emitter shape from a cube to a rectangle. Let's then use our particle emitter scale to scale down the size of our particle emission shape. Next, we'll need to adjust the way in which our particle is emitted. Since we want our particle to appear as small drops of water coming from the ground, we'll need to enable and adjust its velocity over lifetime settings. 
to randomize the way in which it acts, we can change it from constant to randomize between two constants. From here, we can adjust our settings until the particles begin to act more like water splashes emitted from the rain hitting a surface. Let's next adjust our color over lifetime gradient so that the drops appear similar to the color of the rain at the start of their lifetime, then appear more clear or white at the end of their lifetime. Next, let's adjust the material for our water splash particles. To do this, we'll create a new material and add our water drop sprite sheet albedo and normal map. And we then need to place a material in the material input of our particles renderer setting. Next, like our water ripple, since this texture was created to be a sprite sheet, we need to enable our texture sheet animation settings and set our X tiles to four and our Y tiles to two. At this point, we could tweak our particle system and water drop material values until they appear to how we envision them for our game. With our water splash and our water ripple particle system complete, let's now add it to our raindrop particle system. To do this, we simply need to do two things. With our rain particle system selected, we first need to enable the particle system's collision. In the collision setting, we need to change the type from planes to world. Next, we need to reduce the bounce from 1 to 0.2, and we want to change the life loss from 0 to 1. This setting ensures that the particle will be destroyed when it comes in contact with the collider. For the most accurate results, we can keep the collision quality at high, or to better optimize our scene or game, we can turn the collision quality to medium or low. Something to note, the medium and low collision quality settings only affects static colliders. So if characters or objects are moving in our scene, their collider won't enable the water ripple and water splash effect. Lastly, we need to enable our range sub emitter setting. With our sub emitter enabled, we first need to make our water ripple and our water splash particle effects children of our rain particle system. Next, let's hit the plus button to allow us to add more than one sub emitter to a single particle system. Next, let's place our particle systems in our sub emitters particle system value. Lastly, let's change our sub emitter type from birth to collision. With that complete, we can now make any further adjustments to any of the values and settings to our particle system and materials so that they achieve the optimal look for our game or scene. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, and free game asset giveaways.